Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this series of video, we are going to see about the subject BEC 405A8051 microcontroller about the module 1. Now, in module 1, yesterday series, we have seen about the microprocessor versus microcontroller and embedded processor. In this series, we are going to see about the processor architecture that is hardware versus Princeton or otherwise Princeton is called as von Neumann architecture. And also we will co cover about RISC and CISC architecture. Come let's go into the video. First to see about the architecture, von Neumann architecture. Here you can see a central processing unit with a memory unit with address and data buses. So here this architecture is a type of architecture where the central processing unit memory and input output peripheral devices are available and it is shared among the single bus for the communication. So it was named after John von Neumann. So that is why this, is, this architecture is named von Neumann or otherwise you call it as Princeton architecture. So here in this von Neumann architecture, the instruction and the data will be stored in the single memory that is the RAM and the ROM and this is connected to the CPU and the input output devices through some common bus. So the CPU start executing the instruction by fetching all the data from the memory and decoding it and then it executes them. So this is how von Neumann architecture works. So coming to this hardware architecture you can see you have program memory central processing unit data memory connected across with data and address buses. So from this architecture we can explain that this is a type of architecture where there are separate memory spaces. So here you can see data memory and program memory. So two separate memory spaces for both the instruction and the data. So it was developed by hardware university. So it is named after that particular name. So it names hardware architecture. So here the CPU access the instruction and the data memory space separately. So it is not a single memory. It is a separate memory. So we call this as hardware architecture. Here the one Neumann architecture we term it as traditional design and it has been mostly used in personal computers and it is very simple and also cost effective. When dealing with hardware architecture, it offers better performance, but the architecture is a bit complex when compared to the von Neumann. So moving on to the differentiation between the hardware architecture and von Neumann architecture, here there are some features like memory, data buses, instruction fetching, speed, complexity, cost, programming and application. So moving on to the memory, hardware, hardware is having separate memory spaces for both the data and instruction. Here von Neumann is having single memory space. Data buses, yes, hardware is having separate data buses for instruction and data. Here one single data set is enough for both the data and the instruction. Instruction fetching and data access, so it is concurrently happening and here in one Neumann, it cannot happen simultaneously because it is having only single set of bus. So continuously it cannot do, only one at a time. Speed. So faster because the process of data is concurrent, obviously the speed is on the higher side. But one Neumann is having slower speed because it can send only one set of instruction at one time. Complexity. Hardware is much complex when compared to the von Neumann. Cost. So because of complexity, the cost is on the higher side. Here the simpler design cost is effective. Programming. Yes, the hardware is a bit challenging because it is having two memory spaces. You have to code for each and every memory spaces to take the data from the memory and send it back to the CPU to decode and execute them. Here von Neumann the programming is a bit easy because it is having single set of memory space. Application, hardware is used for all real-time uh, 
performance system or real time signal processing system von neumann it is used for general computer personal computers so moving on to the next thing that is the cisc and risc architecture so here you can see risc and cisc architecture where you have risc itself means reduce instruction set computing cisc itself means complex instruction set computing so instruction set reduce instruction set so there are simpler instruction in risc and there are lot set of complex instruction set in cisc what about the instruction execution so here in risc because of reduced instruction each of the instructions has only one clock cycle that is it forms the pipelining structure fetch decode and execute cisc is having multiple clock cycle it is not one pipeline structure it is going to repeat so multiple clock cycle reliance on compi compiler yes risc relies on compiler to break down the complex task if at all if the instruction is a bigger one it breaks down into a simpler instruction and execute it here it is used for optimization instruction format here the instruction format is in such a way that it can be easily decoded but here it is not so it is bit tough but then it is broke down into simple programming model so focus about what focus how is the speed so risk being having a reduced instruction yes the execution is on the higher side and also it consumes low power but the cisc is having some instruction that is uh, the faster it is not the faster instruction it takes some time to speed up the instruction and also to develop the simpler programming model and advantages yes it is a low power consumption it is very simple design very small set of instruction you use so n number of advantages cisc also has advantages but then you you tell better compared to the risc cisc is having some complex structures the coding is little bigger when compared to the risc so maybe a small disadvantages across the cisc and then application in mobile devices embedded system technologies that is home automations uh, operating of washing machine refrigerator risc is being used and cisc is being used for personal computer so historically traditionally developed uh, electronic devices uses the cisc architecture so hope you have understood the small concept please be stay tuned for more information thank you